What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll teach you all how to code bots in 2022 because let's be honest, they're probably whooping your butt. And if you can't beat them, join them. Software automation is one of the most unexplored fields of YouTube's tech, you know, mainstream industry. And I'm here to break that because I want everyone to understand how amazing being able to code automated programs slash bots are because one, it's lucrative. And two, it'll help you on your resume. And three, it is one of the most useful skills to have because it can help you accomplish so many things. Now first, a bit about my bot developer background so you guys don't think I'm some weird kid. I began coding bots roughly three years ago when my friend approached me and asked me if I could code a bot for him that could check out retail products like PS5s, PS4s, the latest sneakers within seconds. And I was like, whoa, whoa, this is a big task. And my friend and I, we both hopped in into it and we were fresh, right? We had absolutely no idea what to do. And it took about seven months to a year to finally create our first bot that actually worked. And this, you know, this journey came with a lot of mistakes, a lot of unnecessary things. And that's why I wanna make sure that you all, you know, since I've been through it, you all won't go through the same mistakes that I did and you guys can learn from what I did wrong. So the first thing you gotta do to be able to code bots successfully is to learn an automation language and framework. All right, now there's a lot of automation languages out there. Right? A lot of programs that are, a lot of languages are used to create programs that you know can do things by themselves by manipulating the browser. The top two languages to learn in 2022 for you know bots is Node.js, Python, and if you want to add a third, Golang. Now the reason I put Node.js at first is because it's a language I'm most familiar with. Right, I've used it to create my most successful bots ever. You know, it's very lightweight, dynamic, and it's pretty easy to learn. There's a bunch of resources that out there that you can use to learn node.js and the same thing applies for python golang is still relatively new so there's not as many resources but there's still enough for you to be able to get started and create bots now the question is how can you really you know mash these languages right well there's a bunch of free courses and youtube videos that cover coding in these languages tons of channels tech with tim um uh COVID chris there's a bunch of channels that help you you know learn this type of stuff and that's really what i did right i never i paid zero dollars zero dollars to learn how to code because there's no reason to right if you're just trying to learn how to code in a basic language there's tons of free resources out there all right there's no point buying a 10 hour js course when you can watch a 10 hour free youtube video and i did mention not just learn languages but you also have to learn frameworks and the best framework to learn is puppeteer js puppeteer js is one of the best frameworks to develop automated programs because puppeteer js allows you to control a browser through your program. You can literally make the browser, uh, move the mouse, uh, click uh, buttons, search stuff up, all through an automated fashion by using PuppeteerJS, which is why it's something that I highly recommend for everyone in this video to learn. And that's why I put Node.js first, because if you don't, if you don't know Node.js, then you know PuppeteerJS. Now, once you've learned this language and framework, you know, you create some side projects to help build your coding fundamentals, it's time to create your first bot. This might be like, whoa, 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 already? I can create a bot already. The thing is, you can create a beginner bot, and I actually made a free Skillshare course, link in the description below, where I teach you all how to create a bot for Walmart. In my course, I specifically cover a browser bot, and a browser bot is when you have a bot that uses a browser to accomplish certain tasks. And for example, if you're trying to check out an item, the, the browser will click add to cart, you know, fill all your shipping details, your payment details, click place order, it'll do it all for you. All you have to do is run the program, and you can sit on your back and relax, right? I teach you guys how to do that. So being able to do that, one, that's a great accomplishment that you can include in your resume, but two, it also helps you, you know, understand how a browser works, right? It understands the, the stuff that a, you know, a browser must simulate to, real, to seem like a real user. And now you guys might be thinking, okay, so you're basically creating checkout bots, right? You're creating these bots that check out items within seconds because a lot of people are unfortunately not able to get these items by manually trying to check out. Yes, that's true. In fact, that's probably the most lucrative market for bots out there, but there's other ways you create a bot. There's other bots you create. For example, there's bots that just retweets, right? There's bots that post tweets for you. If you just click a button, it'll post like whatever tweet you want at every, you know, this time of day, every single day, right? There's a bunch of bots out there because a bot is just an automated program. So whatever purpose you want to create a bot for, you can do it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a checkout bot. People make Discord bots, people make Twitter bots, people make Reddit bots. There's a ton of things that you can do. And now that you created your first beginner bot, this is where big league learning comes in. All right, this is where things get spicy. And this is definitely tailored more for checkout bots, but just because that's what a lot of people are interested in, I will talk about it. But this can also be applied to other you know, bots and other programs in general. And that is to learn HTTP request handling, right? You have to understand how client and service communicate, how well request body is, right? What response body is, what JSON is, how to interpret JSON, how to parse JSON, 
cookies are, what are session cookies, how important cookies are in um, letting the browser know that you're a real person, even though you're actually not your bot, right? You have to understand all these different materials, right? And what I just said probably sounds like gibberish. And if it does, then you know, you're not gonna be able to create a bot that you can actually sell and make money off of and a bot that you know competes against others, right? You probably create a more personal bot. But if you do wanna understand the terms I just said, then go research them, right? Like I said, tons of resources on YouTube. You just literally do a Google search and say, what is a HTTP request? And it will tell you all the information you need to know. Because you have to understand, guys, a bot is not a real person, right? And the internet and many sites are investing millions of dollars in anti-bot security to keep you know these automated programs out. Now, obviously on sites like Twitter and Reddit, they probably don't care. But if you're trying to create a checkout bot for like a site like Walmart, Target, Nike, they're gonna care. Right? They're investing millions to kick people like you out. So the only way you'll be able to get past them is to understand exactly what it takes to make your bot seem like a real person. And that is why I, I'm saying learn HTTP request handling because it definitely you know, helps you understand what TLS is, right? what handshakes are, and it helps you understand how to make your bot seem like a real person. And that way you know you won't get kicked out and you're, you can accomplish the goal that you want to accomplish. And real quick, by the way, the only way to mimic a real person through HTTP request handling is through cookies. So that's why I definitely pay attention to what cookies are and how you can use cookies to your advantage. So now that you learned your language, you created a beginner checkout by your you know, understanding HTTP request handling, you're still maybe not the most experienced in it, but you have a general idea of what's going on. Now it's time for you to keep practicing with different sites, right? In my course, I cover Walmart, right? My free course. Now, there's other sites out there. There's a gazillion, right? What you have to do is you have to start creating bots for different websites, right? Because by creating, you know, like a browser bot and it doesn't need HTTP request handling, what you're enabling yourself to do is you're experiencing different sites, different securities, different, different uh, things put in place to keep you out of that website, right? To keep your bot out the website and being able to experience these things, see them firsthand to help you understand, all right, if I ever run into this problem again, how can I circumvent it? How can I get past this problem? How can I get past when the website, you know, puts the form in an iframe, it puts the submit button in a different iframe? How, how do I get past this? And just experiencing, you know, these challenges and going, you know, you know, going past them and, you know, destroying them, you know, destroying these obstacles in your path, then you're enabling yourself to become a better bot developer. And by doing that, you're literally teaching yourself a super lucrative and lifelong skill that you can use forever. And lastly, by going against different sites, you're becoming more versatile and you're building a database of skills and tricks that you can use for other sites, right? And then there's only so many things a website slash company can do to keep you out. Once you learn all the tricks, you're basically unstoppable, which is such a powerful thing to say.